today that we are celebrating Women's National Women's Ministries Day. Praise the Lord. Amen. That means the women are running the service today. All right, just a couple of quick announcements before we get back into worship. Remember to tithe. Uh, the Joash chest is over there by the door. Thank you very much for your faithfulness for there. Tonight is Couples Connection. Uh, you may be seated for a moment if you'd like. How is that? Uh, tonight is Couples Connection. We are having a Zoom Bible study at 6 p.m. If we do not have your a uh, email address, will you see me after service? Because we want to send you the link. We want to encourage every married couple to be involved. Tonight we are getting into some really deep and personal things. The Bible studies have been getting good, and they're getting gooder and gooder and gooder. <laughs> Amen. I don't know if that's proper English, but they are. Okay. So see me after service. Also, the very first John Santulli Pinewood Derby is going to be coming up uh, Saturday, April 30th at 2 p.m. right here at the church. Yeah, praise the Lord. We're giving honor to John Santulli. Amen. He served in the Royal Rangers for I don't know how many years, and uh, it is very fitting. I don't know where Craig is. Thank you, Craig, for renaming that, the John Santulli Penwood Derby. So weigh-ins are going to start a little bit earlier because we have a lot of entries this year. So if you're involved in it, please come at 12 p.m. for weigh-ins, okay? So 12 p.m. for weigh-in. The race actually starts at 2 p.m. Pastor and I have a car that we made this year. We're going to be a husband and wife team, and uh, our car is pretty spectacular. <laughs> Don't be jealous. Don't be jealous. Don't be hating on us. And, uh, thank you for that. Thank you. Uh, on a solemn note, uh, Dave Petroni's son, Dave Jr., passed away. And the viewing is going to be this Friday from 6 to 8. Uh, with the funeral following Saturday at 11 o'clock, all here at Central Assembly. Please come out and support this family in your time of need. Yes. Um, and I just want to, uh, let's bow our heads, let's pray. Amen, let's pray. Father, we Jesus. thank you for today. God, we pray your Holy Spirit come down upon us, Lord. Yes, God, we lift the Petronis before you, Lord. Yes, your yes, word Jesus. promises that you'd send your Holy Spirit to be our comforter. And so we pray comfort upon the whole family, Lord. And God, we pray, Lord, for Dave as he's just gone through shoulder surgery this past week. God, heal that shoulder up. Take that pain away. God, we also lift up the relatives of Susan Michaels, Lord. God, they, they've lost a loved one, and we pray comfort upon them as well, Lord, that you would just surround that family, Lord, with your Holy Spirit, yes. that you'd bring salvation to that family, yes, pray in Father. the name of Jesus. God, for Thank Robin you, Howe, we lift her. She's just lost her mother. God, be upon that family, Lord, in the name of Jesus. God, we lift up Greg Butts to you, Lord, with his broken back. God, we pray that you would properly heal that back, put it back into place. Heal his foot from surgery, Lord. Put that into place. Let it heal properly in the name of Jesus. God, we lift up Jeff Stewart. Lord, we thank you for him today. God, we thank you that you brought him through you, open heart surgery, thank Lord. You, we thank you, Lord. And we pray continued healing upon that heart, Lord. And for Mari Cook, we lift her before you. Lord, she's got a broken ankle. God, heal that ankle. Let it properly heal in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. And all Hallelujah. God's people said, amen. amen and amen. Stand with me, please. Let's give God uh, his honor that he is due today. We'll do that in a second. And, and uh, Lord, just let's get back into worshiping God in Jesus' name. Amen. amen.
many of you are grateful for him today? Amen.
pouring out our hearts. Yes, Lord, oh, great are you, Lord. It's your breath, it's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise, pour out our praise. It's your breath.
that of course again. I surrender all. Can I tell you that? This is for this hour, for this day, and for you. Amen. Can I hear an amen? This is for you today. I'm telling you that. All right. This is also, uh, besides Palm Sunday, happy Palm Sunday, today is also Mission Sunday. And so I am going to have Dawn Seacrest, our missions director, come up and share with us. morning. How are you? Are you good? Are you alive? Okay, we're alive. We should be noisy. Yeah. It's a good morning. It's happy Palm Sunday. Yeah. So next week, believe it or not, it's Easter. Uh, so it's not about the Easter candy, although we probably like the Easter candy. It's about the resurrection. So hey, amen. So Psalms, uh, 7, verse 17. I will give thanks to the Lord because his righteousness and, of his righteousness and will sing praise to the name of the Lord most high. Um, God is so wonderful, so good. Um, so, Faith and Church, $715 went to Convoy of Hope. other supplies into the Ukraine and uh, wherever there are refugees um, outside of the um, of Ukraine. So um, please keep it in prayer. Uh, over on the missions table over there, there are some prayer requests for the Ukraine and other things too, but uh, you can go over there, look and, and see what you can pray for, what they have need of. Very, very high. Uh, many, many needs morning, Brandy and Caleb are over there. They're going to go to El Salvador. Let's help send them. Today they are going to be uh, selling um, Easter eggs and chocolate peanut butter Easter eggs. So uh, in one week's time, last week I think the plane ticket was $500 and some dollars. Uh, this week $700, it went up $200. $750, that's a lot of money. Uh, so anyway, um, and back here, there's a box, and so we're going to fill it 
this year with flip-flops and t-shirts. And uh, so fill it up full of, if you have used t-shirts that are in good condition, go ahead, put them in there. But remember, in El Salvador, they're little people. They're shorter than I am, so I'm tall, so they're little. And uh, so they're not going to fit into an extra large or extra, extra large. It's more like small and mediums, okay? So uh, they make things work, but uh, let's be mindful of that. Uh, so please help fill it. And uh, this morning we have another opportunity. I know we're raising money for missions, but it's missions. And uh, we have plenty here. And so... May and uh, towards this building that they're purchasing. And I think it's a great thing. We're going to be a part of Mexico. Someday you're going to be in heaven and some little kid's going to come up to you and say, thank you for filling my belly. And someone else is going to come and thank you. I'm saved. Uh, I came to Jesus because you gave. And we have to remember one dollar So one dollar of ours, which doesn't go too far here, because even the dollar store is a dollar twenty-five. So, you know, not too many things um, are a dollar, but your souls can be one. And so, just remember that. And uh, Jennifer wanted me to share a testimony, and so I'm going to bring this testimony. This is really awesome. This is how God transforms lives like a modern day Paul story. There was a man who's now in missions. Uh, um, anyway, his name was Zippy. Z-I-P-P-Y. Now Zippy, when he was, he was on drugs by the time he was in eighth grade. And that was the year that his mother went to prison for murder. So you know what kind of family he kind of grew up in, right? So anyway, Zippy stole, he vandalized his school with makeshift bombs. He got suspended for knocking a classmate unconscious. By the age of 17, these are the kind of kids you want in youth group. Okay, all right, by the age of 17, he was expelled permanently from school. He began living on the streets, drinking excessively. He enlisted in the Ar uh, the Navy, uh, but that didn't reform him, a him at all. He was kicked out after splitting another sailor's head open. So he got kicked out of the Navy, got kicked out of school. Pretty sad, right? So his life continued its downward spiral. He got kicked out of every bar, he said, every restaurant, and every store around. And even, even the homeless camps kicked him out. That's pretty bad, okay? So somewhere there was a bench, I suppose, for him. But anyway, so there's a semi-pro uh, football team he joined it. And wouldn't you know, there was a Christian man there, Christian coach, who saw this young man. And he saw this young man with a lot of potential. See, we see young people, and sometimes we want to throw them away. Um, but never do that, because there's always potential. There's potential in all of us. And uh, Zippy was, is a big guy. But this kindly Christian coach took him under, under his wing. He saw potential, and he began to invest. So for three years, this coach mentored him, and Zippy began and he gave his heart to the Lord within two weeks. 
And that's awesome. He got married. They have five children. But he thought, you know what? There's more somewhere. And so, you know what? He's a missionary today. And only Jesus, only Jesus, only Jesus can transform a person's life like that. And uh, so, Zippy is able to pour into other men in that are in the same condition that he is. So he has an outreach there, and God. God never, um, never, he, he will take a messed up life. He never lets anything go to waste. Isn't that awesome? So Zippy is out there ministering. Um, he's with uh, the mobilization of the Assemblies of God mission. So, um, so there you go. So let's stop and pray for a minute too. So, Lord God, we thank you, we praise you. We thank you, Father, that, Lord God, we can partner with you. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for the money that's sent to the Ukraine. I know that you're going to triple, quadruple it, Lord God, every penny. I thank you, Lord God, that you are sending Brandy and Caleb back to El Salvador. And, Lord God, when you say go, Lord God, you supply every penny. And, Lord God, so we thank you, Lord God. Bless them, Lord God, and encourage them and strengthen them as they go forth. And we thank you, Father, for El Salvador's, Father God, that you reach into that country and save souls for your kingdom. We thank you, Father, that, Lord God, we can partner with the DiMartinos, Father, today. And we thank you, Father, for Mexico. We thank you, Father, that, Lord God, that we can fill empty stomachs, Lord God. We can fill empty souls. Lord God, with every dollar we put in, Father, Lord God, it goes for your kingdom, and we thank you, Jesus. We praise you. We give you honor and glory. We thank you, Father, for this man, Zippy, and his, his testimony, Father. He's one, Lord God, that many people in the world would throw him out, Lord God. Even the church might throw him out, but, Lord God, you never did. And, Lord God, you've made something out of him, Lord God, that uh, transforms his life, Father, and other people's lives. And we thank you, Father. We praise you. We give you honor and glory. In your precious name, amen. Amen and amen. Thank you so much, Don. I appreciate that testimony. God has really been doing a work. We have several other testimonies. Uh, God's been moving in our women. I'm going to ask Edna Colony to come forth. She's got a testimony to share. And while she's coming, I want to remind you, next week is Easter. This is a phenomenal opportunity to invite people that don't normally come to church. The children are putting on an Easter presentation. Praise the Lord. It's going to be a wonderful Sunday. Make sure you invite someone. Edna, share what God has done for you. This testimony is about my nephew. Um, back in September 16th of 2020, he was at work and he had a massive heart attack. Uh, an aneurysm had broke in his aorta. He was flown to Robert Packer, where the surgeons took him into surgery, and he was there for many, many hours. They told Lisa, my sister, my niece, that he had a 50% chance. Later, after the surgery, they told her that his chance was only 3%. Um, he came out of the surgery, and everything went well, except for he had a long recovery ahead of him. On September 22nd, on 2020, about 50 people, or maybe even more, I'm not sure, met in the Robert Packer Hospital parking lot. And we prayed for Terry. And up until that point, he did not remember what had happened to him. But after that prayer, he started to remember, and his healing began. And he came home. Uh, he couldn't be left alone, so his wife wasn't able to work, so they were both out of work. But God provided for them. Terry knew he was a walking miracle. But he was told that he had to have another surgery. The first one repaired his aorta. The second one had to replace it, the valve. So on, um, um, I'm not sure what the date was, a September 30th. In 2021 he had a second surgery 
he is now back to work. He's not doing what he did before because it, actually his boss wouldn't hire him back because of his health issues. But there is a bigger problem. Terry knows he's a walking miracle. But he, him and Lisa, my niece, started going to church with my sister-in-law after my brother passed away um, last year. But Terry won't accept Jesus as a Savior because he knows or he's afraid that if he accepts him, that he's going to have to admit that his mom and his sister are in hell. So I need everyone to pray yes, amen. that they will amen. accept Jesus Christ yes. as their Savior. Yes, amen. Absolutely. Because we don't know. Only God knows. Amen. Right. Yeah. So I just ask to pray because Terry is going to have a great testimony. Because yeah. right. people don't live through massive heart attacks right. like that. Right. Right. So I'm just asking for you to pray. so much. Uh, we're we're going to bow our heads and we're going to pray. And I'm going to ask Bianca Barnes to come forward. She's got a tremendous testimony. And uh, let's just bow our heads right now. Father, we lift up Terry. God, we know that you can save the worst of the worst and the best of the best. God, we pray that you just soften his heart towards you, Lord. And we pray that he come into the house of the Lord. God, we pray for his salvation this day. We thank you for his life. And we're, and we're thanking you in advance for his salvation in Jesus name amen thank you thank you thank you Edna tremendous testimony Bianca Barnes come forward share what God has done for you too thank you hello hi so I just wanted to share a bit of what the Lord did for me when I was in the hospital after having my daughter Brinley so I had a Brinley by a c-section it was a planned c-section but there were some complications that resulted in some internal bleeding so I had to have an emergency surgery where the doctors basically had to go back in and pretty much retrace their steps in order to find the source of the bleed. Um, thankfully, they were able to find the source, but I lost a lot of blood, about a liter of blood. So because I lost so much blood, I had to have a blood transfusion. Um, and after I received the blood transfusion, um, everything was looking good, and I was set to be discharged from the hospital. Um, but that morning that I was supposed to be discharged, when they took my blood work again, they found that my blood count had dropped again. So they were concerned that they maybe missed something during the surgery and that I could be still bleeding internally. So before they would discharge me, they ordered um, repeat blood work and a CT scan. So um, in that moment, I was just really afraid of... Um, having another surgery. I was just kind of had all I could take and um, was feeling a little bit hopeless. But um, in that moment, I just remember praying and saying, God, you created my body and you created the blood that runs through my veins. And I know that you healed the woman with the issue of blood with just the touch of the hem of your garment. And I know that you can increase my blood supply. So I just asked him to increase my blood supply. And um, the nurses came in shortly after. They took my blood, and um, we just waited for the results. And after a few hours, uh, the nurse came back in, and I remember asking her, did my blood count stabilize? Because they expect it to at least stabilize after receiving a blood transfusion. And um, she said, your blood count not only stabilized, but it increased significantly. Wow. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and my CT scan came back clear. And um, during this time, my little girl, my, my baby, was actually in the NICU. Um, she was having difficulty breathing. And uh, we both pulled through, and we were discharged on the same day. And God has just been so faithful to heal me, to heal my body. And, you know, I'm here standing before you all today. <laughs> I'm just so grateful for that. And um, thank you all for everything that you did for us, for all your prayers and the, the meals that you dropped off and the beautiful baby shower. We're just so grateful for all of you and so glad that we're part of such an amazing church. Yeah, so thank you. Bad. 
We love you guys, and thank you so much, Bianca. Uh, I do remember that. I think, Pat, you saw that on Facebook, that she was having some issues there, and we put it on the prayer chain, and all the prayer warriors got to work. God gets the glory in that situation. Amen. He has definitely been moving in our church lately. Thank you so much, ladies, for those testimonies. I also want to thank, while we're at it, Tammy Eggers. What a phenomenal time we had Friday night. Those of you ladies who went out to Louis, what we just needed a night of fun and to unwind and have a good time because our ladies have been very busy at work here at Central. Um, we have had an unusual amount of funerals and deaths and surgeries and folks having babies and just, and Barbie Butts and her team, where's Barbie Butts? I don't know, there you are. Thank you, Barbie Butts, and all you ladies who send out the cards, send out the flowers, make the meals, deliver the meals, and uh, she does a tremendous job at your, after each funeral, she puts on a big, beautiful meal for the families, uh, just wants to bless them, and it's just an incredible um, uh, just an incredible ministry. It's been a very busy ministry, and so I thank you, ladies. You, I, there's nowhere that I would rather be than serving Jesus with this group of people. Um, the men, too, the men come. They help set up the tables and the chairs every time we got some kind of event going, and, and this is what a healthy church looks like. Amen. This is a healthy church. Amen. I feel privileged to be here with you today, and let's get to the uh, message portion of our service. Amen. Today, Lord, we just ask your blessing upon the word today. Let your Holy Spirit follow with signs and wonders in the name of Jesus, Lord. In Jesus' name, Lord, soften hearts to receive this message today. Thank you, thank you, and thank you again. Well, today we're going to get into the book of Joel. Joel is a prophet in the Old Testament. Um, he is known as the end times Holy Spirit prophet um, because he prophesies about the Holy Spirit coming in the last days. And how many know we are in the last days? Amen. But we're living in some exciting times, incredibly exciting times. There is nothing to be nervous about what is going on in our world today, right? Because we know the end of the story, folks. We know what's going to happen. All right, amen? There's nothing to be nervous about. All right, so let's turn to Joel chapter 1, verse 1. The word of the Lord that came to Joel, son of Pethwell. So Joel is getting a word from the Lord here. God is speaking to him, right? Now let's just stop for a quick second, okay? Can I tell you something? God can speak to you too. He doesn't just speak to the super saints, right, or the, the prophets of the old. He can speak to every single person in this place, every single person live streaming today. He speaks to his people. Amen? Okay? He speaks through uh, pastors. He speaks through his word. He speaks through his audible voice. He speaks through a still small voice in our head. He can give us a peace to move forward in, in a, uh, an area of our lives. He can give us an unrest or a check in our spirit not to move forward in, in an area in our life. Amen? There's lots of ways that God can speak to us. Amen? Okay? And if there was ever a time where we needed to hear from the Lord, it's now. It is now. We need to hear from God. Amen? Okay. So uh, let's get back to the book of Joel. All right. We'll pick up in verse 2. Verse 2 says, hear this. And this is Joel speaking. He's saying, hear this, you elders. Listen, all who live in the land, has anything like this ever happened in all your days or in the days of your ancestors? So he's addressing the people of Judah. He's asking them, has anything like this ever happened in your life before? Or your ancestors' lives, right? Yeah, okay. So it's interesting because I find myself, I have said this many times, you have said this, we've talked about this, right? I can't believe what is going on in the last two years on earth. I have never lived through anything like this. None of my ancestors have lived through anything like this. 
Now, maybe they went through the Spanish flu, but they didn't go through all the rioting in the streets, cities burning, political unrest, racial tension, violence, war, rumors of wars, right? Rumors of wars, they've been going on, along with a pandemic and having to be quarantined all at the same time. That's never happened in history before. So we're living in some incredibly historical moments. They're taking place right now. How exciting. This is going to all go down in the history books, folks. So, so back to Joel. Here is what Joel is talking about, okay? In Joel's day, Judah got hit with a huge swarm of locusts. It just descended upon the land, right? Okay? So let's take a look at Joel uh, chapter 1, verses 6 and 7. This is Joel speaking again. He says, A nation has invaded my land, a mighty army without number. It has teeth like a lion, fangs of a lioness. It has laid waste my vines. It's ruined my fig trees. It has stripped off their bark, and it has thrown it all away, leaving their branches white or leaving their branches bare, right? So there's so many locusts here that he compares them to a nation and a mighty army without number. So it's just swarms and swarms and swarms of locusts that descend upon Judah, right? Okay, let's move down to verse 10. Here's Joel again speaking. He says, the the fields are ruined. The ground is dried up. The olive oil fails. Despair, you farmers. Wail, you vine growers. Grieve for the wheat and the barley because the harvest of the field is destroyed. The vine is dried up. The fig tree is withered. The pomegranate, the palm, and the apple tree, all the trees of the field are all dried up. Surely the people's joy is withered away. Let's move down to verse 16. Has not the food been cut off before our very eyes and the joy and the gladness from the house of God? The seeds are shriveled beneath the ground or beneath the clods. The storehouses are in ruins. The granaries have broken down, for the grain has all dried up. How the cattle moan. The herds mill about because they have no pasture. Even the flocks of sheep are suffering. So here... This paints a very bleak picture of Judah. The locusts have eaten every single thing in the land, all the vegetation gone. Here's a situation where these people know that they're in their last days, right? Because they know they're going to be facing starvation soon, right? Yep, they know it. And not only them, it's their animals too. Their animals are going to be starving to death because there's no grass in the pasture for the sheep and the cattle all gone. So they know their end is near. They know they're, they're in total despair. And again, this kind of sounds like today, right? Because people today are feeling incredibly hopeless. They're feeling very hopeless. Because without Jesus in their lives, they, they just don't know how to cope with everything that's going on. They say alcohol sales have gone way up. Because this is how people are coping in the world. They're drinking, right? They say drug-related deaths on the rise in the last two years. Among young people, suicide rates have raised in the last two years. Yeah. In fact, they say death rates, mortality rates, from 2019 to 2020 increased almost 20%. So the death rates went up when COVID started, right? And that's the highest, uh, largest spike in 100 years, right? Okay, and now with Russia invading the Ukraine, where one-third of the world's wheat comes from, both Russia, both the Ukraine, that's where one-third of the world's wheat comes from. But now is the time they should be planting, and clearly they're not, because they're too busy fighting. They've ordered all the men in the Ukraine, ages 18 to 60. They've got to go to war right? So they're not doing any planning, and Russia might be doing a little bit, but not that much, right? Okay, but they say, listen to this, I just learned, they say the bigger issue right now is with fertilizer, right? So fertilizer is made out of three things I learned, phosphorus, potash, and nitrogen, and 20 to 25 percent of all potash comes from Russia, but when we cut Russia off at the banks, they cut us off from potash, right? 
So now the price of potash has gone way up, right? So this makes fertilizer a lot more expensive on the farmers, right? And to make matters worse, <laughs> the gasoline that runs the farmers' tractors and plows has also gone up, right? Okay, so as a result, farmers aren't going to be able to do, you know, they're just not going to be able to afford much planting. Um, with an already wheat, corn, and soybean prices have skyrocketed, and they are saying now that a famine may hit the world by the end of this year. This is what they're predicting. I, I heard Biden even say it recently, right? So not a, not a bad idea, folks, to start preparing yourself, preparing your households, right? Stock up a little extra so you can bless others, right? Okay. But I find this very interesting <clears throat> because we just might be in a similar situation as Joel, right? As Judah in the book of Joel. Isn't that interesting? Well, this is turning out to be a cheery message. <laughs> You're welcome, everybody. <laughs> All right. Okay. All right. Listen, can I just tell you one thing about this pending uh, famine? I am not one bit frightened by it, scared by it, not even a little bit, not even a little bit. I'm not fearful all, and you shouldn't be either, okay? You shouldn't be either, and let me show you why, okay? Turn with me to Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 28, Deuteronomy 28, verses, chapter 28, verses 1 through 14, and this is why I'm not worried. This is why I'm not worried. Here we go. And it, and it shall come to pass that if you shall hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord your God, and to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command you this day, that the Lord your God will set you high above all nations of the earth, and all these blessings shall come on you and overtake you, you if you shall hearken unto the voice of the Lord your God. Blessed shall you be in the city, and blessed shall you be in the field and blessed shall be the fruit of your body and the fruit of your ground and the fruit of your cattle and the increase of your kind and the flocks of your sheep blessed shall be your basket and blessed shall be your store and blessed shall you be when you come in and blessed shall you be when you go out and the Lord shall cause your enemies who rise up against you to be smitten before your face they shall come out against you one way and they shall flee before you seven different ways and the Lord shall command the blessings upon you and your storehouses and all that you set your hand unto and he shall bless you I'm gonna have a Holy Ghost breakdown in a fit here I'm gonna have a Holy Ghost breakdown in a fit and the Lord shall command the blessing upon you and you and your storehouses and all that you set your hand unto and he shall bless you in the land which your Lord your God gives you and the Lord shall establish you a holy people unto himself and he has as he has sworn to you if you shall keep the commandments of the Lord your God and walk in his ways and all the people of the earth shall see that you are called by the name of the Lord and they will be afraid of you and the Lord shall make you plentiful in goods in the fruit of your body and the fruit of your cattle and in the fruit of your ground and the land which your Lord swore to unto your fathers to give you and the Lord shall open unto you his good treasure the, the heaven to give you the rain in the in your land in his season and to bless all the work of your hand and you shall lend unto many nations and you shall not borrow and the Lord shall make you the head and not the tail and you shall be above only and you shall not be beneath if you hearken unto the commandments of the Lord your God this day which I command to you to observe and to do them final verse verse 14 and you shall not go aside from any of the words which I command you today to the right hand or to the left to go after other gods to serve them God is going to take care of us, folks. God wants to bless our lives. I'm telling you, he wants to pour it out lavishly. He wants to bless every single area of our lives, not just a little bit. He wants to bless it a whole lot. Now, there's an if here. He's going to bless our lives if. Let's read the whole scripture. Let's take it all in. Come on. If we obey him. It says it several times here. All these blessings shall come on you if you obey the commandments of the Lord. And all these blessings shall come on you if 
you obey the voice of the Lord. And it doesn't just say it once or twice. It says it five times in that passage. I think he's trying to speak something to us, right? I think it's worth taking note of, right? Amen. We, we don't need to be worried, folks. We don't need to be worried about any famine, and neither do any people if they follow Jesus. Here's another great scripture. Turn with me to the New Testament. Turn with me to Matthew chapter 6, verses 31 through 33. And here's what that says. It says, so do not worry saying what we shall eat or what we shall drink or what we shall wear for the pagans or the ungodly. Run after these things. And your heavenly father knows that you need them, right? He knows it. He's got your back. But first, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. And all these things, the food, the drink, the clothes, all these things will be given to you as well. So here, here, this verse is specifically saying, he's going to, don't worry about the food. He's going to take care of it. Don't worry about what you drink. He's going to take care of it. Don't worry about your clothes, what you're going to wear. He's going to take care of it. Now also, also, it does say here too, same thing as the other one. Huh, how about that? Uh, it says, but seek first God's kingdom and God's righteousness, right? And God will take care of you. So if we're seeking God, he's going to take care of us. What does that mean? It means seek God's interests first. Seek God's interests first. Well, how do we seek God's interests? What are God's interests? How do we do this? Let me share this story with you because I think it's going to answer our question. Okay, here we go. I just read about this young man, right? He's a young Christian man. He's in Bible study. And his pastor is teaching how the Holy Spirit can guide our lives. How the Holy Spirit speaks to his people. God speaks to his people, right? Okay. And so after... <laughs> After the Bible study, you know, they're chatting a group of people like we kind of chat here. You know how we chat sometimes? And the young man says to, you know, a group of people, oh, you know, I know God spoke to Moa, Noah. I know God spoke to Moses, right? Um, but I just don't believe that he still speaks to people today. He doesn't do that. That's something he did in the Old Testament back in biblical times. doesn't do it anymore. So one of the people he's talking with and uh, must have been a seasoned Christian, I'm going to say, seasoned Christian. He says, <clears throat> why don't you do this? Why don't you pray, God, speak to me? Why don't you just put that before the Lord? Now, when you do this, because the word of God tells us to be still before the Lord, right? We're to be still before the Lord, right? When you're having a conversation with someone, you're still, you're listening to them, right? Be still before the Lord. He said, Turn off your TV, get in your prayer closet or a quiet place, you know, where you can get away from the kids, and speak, Lord, and say, Lord, speak to me, speak to me, and then just be still, see if he says anything. So the kid's driving home from Bible study, right? <laughs> he turns off the car radio, and he says, Lord, if you still speak to people today, speak to me. And at that moment, all of a sudden, in this still small voice in the back of his head it says go buy a gallon of milk that's kind of random right and he's like lord is that you and it's total silence he doesn't hear anything so he's like well you know i can use a gallon of milk so he goes buys a gallon of milk gets in the car he drives home but again he hears a still small voice but there's a little urgency now right and the voice says Go down 7th Street, which is kind of a bad neighborhood, you know, not the best neighborhood, and it's kind of out of his way to get home. But he's like, eh, you know, I think I'm hearing from God. He's starting to hone it in, you know, he's starting to develop his relationship with the Lord, right? He's developing his relationship with the Lord. He thinks God's speaking to him. And so he's obedient, and he follows the voice, right? And so he goes down 7th Street, right? Okay. And um, now let me just stop and say this for a quick second. Um, the Lord will never tell you <laughs> to do something against his word. Right? Can I hear an amen? All right. Thank you. Uh, he's probably never going to tell you to do or say something 
hurtful to another human being to harm yourself. That's not God, okay? Uh, doing insane, harmful things to other people uh, is probably your flesh, you know, if you want to go tell someone off. You know what? Recognize the devil's probably in the details there, okay? We need to recognize that and take control of that, right? Holy Spirit, guide me to do the right things, right? Guide me to say the right things, okay? All right, so there's a free little Bible study there. That was for free. Let's get back to the message. So the guy is driving down 7th Street, and again, He's, he's saying, Lord, what do you want me to do? You know, what should I do now? And he hears the voice again, pull over. And it's real urgent, pull over the car now. So he pulls over the car, right? And he's like, okay, Lord, um, what next? <laughs> you know, <laughs> this is the point, it's like 10 o'clock. He's in kind of a eh, sketchy neighborhood. And God, God speaks to him, go to that house across the street, knock on the door and give him the gallon of milk. Oh my goodness. So, <clears throat> so he starts having an argument with God in the car, right? And he's like, God, I can't do this. This is just, you know, I don't know them. They don't know me. I'm going to look crazy. It's 10 o'clock at, at night. The lights are off in the house, you know. And, and I, please, Lord, don't do this to me. I'm going to look so foolish, you know. He can't shake it. He can't shake it. It's still, it's, it's, and it's stronger now. Go to the house, knock on the door. So he goes to the house. He knocks on the door. But at this point, you know, he's at the front door, and he can see in one of the windows there on the porch. And he looks in, and he can see there is a light on. In the back of the house, there's a light on, and, um, and, and he can hear noise. So he's, he's, he's like, okay, you know, feeling a little bit more confident. Knocks on the door. Uh, a man comes to the door, and, you know, can I help you, you know? And he says, well, God told me to give you this gallon of milk. And... Um, and the man starts crying. The guy's bawling his eyes out. Now, at this point, there's a woman who's walking from the back of the house, and she's carrying a, a crying toddler in her arms, right? And she's saying, we prayed God would send us some help. We prayed God would send us some help. You answered our prayers. And the guy tells him, you can't believe it. We had some incredible bills this month. We had no money for food. Our cupboards are practically bare, and I got no milk in my refrigerator to give my kids. How about that? So the man, he takes out his wallet, the young Christian man hands him the rest of what he's got in his wallet, says, go get whatever else you need, right? So to answer the question, how do we seek God's interests? That's how we seek God's interests. That's how we seek God's interest. See, because taking care of God's people is part of taking care of God's interests. Now, he may speak uh, to you to do something else, bring someone to church, you know, lead them to the Lord. There's other things he can lead you to do, right? Now, listen. Listen to this. What if, what if every single person in this place and live streaming sought God like that every single day. What if we, what if we woke up, everybody here, what if we woke up and we said, um, God, what do you want me to do today? Where do you want me to go today? What do you want me to say to that person today? Where do you want me to go tonight? What do you want me to do tonight? What shall I do here? What shall I do here? What about this day and that day? And we planned our days around what God wanted us to do. You know what would happen? We would take... We would take Horse Heads New York for the kingdom of God. That's what would happen. That's what would happen. We'd fill these empty seats here. That's what would happen, folks. Okay, amen, amen. By the way, does anybody know what anniversary is coming up this week? There's a famous anniversary of a disaster. Anybody know? Just shout it out if you know. Uh, it's a maritime disaster, a famous maritime disaster. How's that? It happened at sea. Oh, ding, 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 ding. We have a winner. Tell her what she's won, Johnny. That's right. It is the sinking. It's This Friday is the sinking, the 110th anniversary of the sinking of the Titanic. That's that's what's happening this, this Friday. Ed, Ed, you were on the Titanic, weren't you? Yeah. Yeah, man, you're looking good for your age there, buddy. 
That's right, he jumped off the ship and he swam back to America, folks. All right. Okay. So it was one of the worst catastrophes. It's right up there with the Holocaust, 9-11, you know, a terrible, terrible thing. Ship hit an iceberg, and within two hours and 40 minutes, it sunk to the bottom of the North Atlantic Ocean, some of the most frigid waters everywhere, anywhere, right? And during those two hours and 40 minutes, some of the worst human behavior took place. It's such an interesting story. I've done a lot of research on it, right? And so what I like to do is I like to read the account of the survivors because they know the true story, right? And so I, yeah, there's a bunch of stuff on YouTube, and you can buy books and stuff like that. So <clears throat> just this is just the worst. Just a, just a couple. We could go on all day long talking about the Titanic. But um, so most of us know the story. They didn't have enough um, uh, lifeboats on board and and so they were just only boarding the women and the children right and it gets to a place where every man on board knows he's not going to make it right yeah he knows he knows he's going down in the ocean and he knows the end is coming here's another situation the end is coming for people they know they're in their last days right Okay, so total chaos breaks out on board. Uh, some men were caught dressing up as women to try and sneak on the lifeboats, you know. One man grabs a baby out of a young mother's arms, throws the baby overboard. Just absolute chaos. Just people were doing stuff out of frustration. They were angry, and a crew member tries his best to restore order but there's just so much pushing and shoving and swearing and fighting and just chaos he pulls out a pistol and he shoots an out of control passenger right just shoots him and the guy ends up dying and so he feels so ashamed of what he did that he turns the gun on himself and he kills himself right and it is said that the passengers who were traveling uh, like down below in steerage, the third class passengers, the poorer people, it is said that they locked these gates, these metal gates, and they were trapped below, left in a sinking ship. Can you imagine the horror? Oh my goodness. Listen, here's the thing. People who don't follow Jesus, they aren't convicted by doing wrong things, you know? And they don't know how to respond in life and death situations, in stressful situations. They, they just, death is a scary thing to the unbeliever, right? Because they don't have the hope of heaven. They, they don't know that, and, and listen, here's what scripture tells us. Heaven is so great, so awesome, we can't even imagine how great it is. You know, we've had some deaths, and we're like, oh, yay, you know, Paul got to see Dad first because he just died, and we're like, yeah, how awesome. You know, we're thinking about the reunions that are taking place right now in heaven, and someday we're going to get to heaven, and we're going to have those reunions too. We are. We're going to see our loved ones, and it is going to be an awesome thing. But people who don't know Jesus, they don't have that. We have nothing to fear, folks, where death is concerned if we're truly following Jesus. And here on earth, furthermore, we are promised his blessings, like in Deuteronomy 28 and Matthew chapter 6. He's got our backs. Dead or alive, he's got us ba our backs. We always have hope. All right, back to the Titanic. I'm getting off course. So there's total panamanium on board, very bad behavior, but there was also some really heroic behavior. Let me tell you about John Harper. Anybody heard of John Harper? He was on board the Titanic. I'm sure Ed knows him. He was a, poor Ed, uh, he was a hero among heroes, truly. He was a Scottish guy. And so John gets saved as a boy. There's nothing spectacular or special about him. He went to church. He learned the word of God. But then something happened in John's life that forever changes him, radically changes him. He gets filled with the Holy Spirit. 
And John is on fire for the Lord. Let me tell you, the Holy Spirit fills him up, and he starts going from corner to corner. He's preaching the gospel on street corners. He's yelling out to people, do you know Jesus? Hey, God's got a plan for your life. Turn away from your sins. Come on, now's the time. Come in. Let me tell you about Jesus. And, and he's, just, he's just on fire for the Lord. That's what the Holy Spirit did for him. Eventually, he becomes a pastor. He gets married, and they have a baby girl him and his wife, they have a baby girl, and several days after the baby is born, his wife dies. Okay, so he becomes a single parent about seven years after that. He gets an invitation to go to preach to Moody Bible Institute, okay? Uh, I think it was known as Moody College that time, or Moody, no, Moody Church, yeah. So that's out in Chicago, Illinois, and that's how come he boards the Titanic, right? Okay. So he's headed out with his seven-year-old daughter. She's seven at this point, and he's headed to America. He's going to Moody, Moody Bible Institute. And at the point where they were boarding only women and children, they realize that this little girl's only living parent is John, and he's a man. And so they have grace upon him, and they say, they offer him a seat on one of the lifeboats. But he doesn't take it. He refuses his seat. He gives it up to someone else. He wraps his little girl in a blanket. And, and there's a, another relative traveling with him, I think an aunt. And he makes sure, he tells the crew, make sure she gets on that lady's lap over there. And he says goodbye to his little girl. Can you imagine? Can you imagine having to do that? How gracious of him. He gives up his seat to someone else. He knows what his death is going to be. He knows what's going to happen. And, uh, and so then John Harper sets out to help other people. And in that two hours and 40 minutes, he goes from person to person to person to person to person to person, asking them, do you know Jesus? Have you asked Jesus into your life? You got to ask for forgiveness. Now's the time. The day of the Lord is at hand. Do you know Jesus? And if you have watched the movie, The Titanic, anybody here watch the movie, The Titanic with uh, Leonardo DiCaprio, right? Okay. So they show John Harper in the movie, they show him praying with people on, the, on board, on the deck there, right? And so this is what he does for the two hours and 40 minutes. Just incredible, because he sees people, many, many people, not only are going to die, but many people are probably going to go to hell, right? God bless that man. At one point, he comes across someone who has, uh, doesn't have a life vest, and they're like, they're panicking. And he says, here, take mine. He gives up his own life vest, right? So it is said that once the ship goes down, right, it goes down and it makes, because it's just such a huge thing, it makes a huge whirlpool, right? And in this whirlpool, for 50 minutes, people were floundering, crying for help, right? They're crying for help. Some of the survivors reported, the survivors that were in the lifeboats, they said, I don't know what was worse, hearing the cries for help or the silence that followed it. Just a horrible uh, thing to go through, you know. So during the 50 minutes that he's floundering in the water, he is still evangelizing the lost. This guy's on fire, you know. And, and uh, a man who's floating on a board, you know, goes by him and he says, hey, are you saved? And the guy says, no. And so he starts preaching the gospel, but the guy drifts off into the darkness, right? The moon wasn't out that night. There were some stars you could kind of see, but not really, okay? So the guy drifts away, but the current brings him back around again. It's the man on the board again. He goes, hey, are you saved? And at this point, John is really struggling. Remember, this guy's got no life vest. He's out in frigid waters that had ice on him. There were ice chunks all in the water that night, they said, right? So here he is, literally freezing to death, right? And, and he asked the guy again, hey, are you saved? And the guy says, no. And so he says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. And right then and there, that man asked Jesus into his life. And he witnesses John Harper going under in the ocean, 
to his watery grave. And that was his last convert, folks. That was his last convert, and I said all that to make this point. We have a job to do, church. And just like John Harper, people all around us are dying. In fact, never before in my life have I seen so many deaths. Just incredible. Let me share this scripture with you. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 5 says, But you be sober, be clear-headed in all things, endure hardship, do the work of an evangelist, and fully carry out your ministry. John Harper gets this scripture. He knows he's to do the work of an evangelist. Can I tell you, we're all called to do the work of an evangelist. Amen. Does everybody know that we're all called to do that? We're all called to bring people to Jesus. I can't make it any clearer. We're living in the last days. We need to be doing what God's speaking to us. Whatever that is, bringing people to church, bringing people to Jesus, helping some people in some way. Amen. All right, back to the book of Joel, though, really quick. Because Joel gets a word from the Lord. Here's where the Lord speaks to him, okay? And he says, I'm judging Judah. God's judging Judah for their sin. And that is why he allowed the locusts to come. And so Joel says to the people, let's put God back in the place where he belongs in our lives. Not down here, up here, right? Right? Okay? Turn with me to Joel 1.14. And here's what Joel says. He says, Sanctify a fast. Deny yourself food. Seek the Lord. That's what he's saying. Sanctify a fast. Call a solemn assembly. So he's telling people here to get serious. Solemn. It's time to get serious about the Lord is what he's saying. And he says, gather the elders and all the inhabitants of the land into the house of the Lord your God and cry unto the Lord. Right? So he's telling the people to repent here. Cry unto the Lord. He's telling them repent. So what is Joel's remedy for the pending famine in their day? Get right with God, folks. Get right with God. Put him back in the rightful place that he belongs in your life. Not down here. He's got to be up here now. Got to be up here or we're never going to make it through, right? Right. So you get right with God, he's going to take care of you. And, and, and we, church, we do have to do that. We got to put him in the rightful place that he belongs in our lives, following his word, uh, following his voice, right? And some of us need to get filled with the Holy Spirit. It's time now. It's time that we do that. Uh, there's no more time to fool around and play games. We can't play church. We've got to get filled with the Holy Spirit. Some of us need to get refilled with the Holy Spirit. When you pour out, you, you, know, you need to get replenished back in. You need to get that refilling, right? Because we can't do it in our own strength. Now, one more thing about Joel. Turn with me to Joel 2.28. I love this verse, Joel 2.28, because here's where Joel is prophesying about the last days, about our time. He's talking about our time. Now, a lot of people say this is what Acts 2, well, that's where it started, but we truly are the end time church. This is a word for us, folks. This is a word for us. Joel 2.28, here it goes. And he, here's Joel speaking. And it, came, and it shall come to pass afterwards that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions, and upon also the servants and upon the handmaidens in those days I will pour out my spirit, and I will show wonders in the heaven and in the earth, fire, blood, and pillars of smoke. And so now let's let's just back up a little bit here because some people think, well, it's very specific. Only the men dream the dreams and the young men shall see the visions. No, no, no. For whatever reason, he says that about those people, maybe because old men sleep more. I don't know. But anyways, and in fact, I, I actually did read that in the commentaries when I studied this. I'm not joking around. They did actually say that. They couldn't figure out because what it says is I will pour out my, my spirit upon all flesh, right? That's everybody. That's old people and young people, men and women, young and old, black, white, 
everybody, everybody's going to get this. You want it, you come get it today. We're going to open up the altar in a few minutes, and God's going to pour out his Holy Spirit, and we need it here today. We need it now in these days, folks. We need this. I'm going to go bonkers in two seconds. One last thing. No, a couple last things. Hang on. All right. He wants to use us, folks. He wants to use us. He wants to use us. This scripture is for us because we are the end time church, right? We're living in very exciting times. And just like God used John Harper, John Harper was God's man for the Titanic. You are God's chosen people for this time, for this day, for this hour. It's you, folks, and everybody live streaming. It's you. God wants to use you. He's chosen you. You're his chosen people for this hour. Isn't this incredible? The things that we've been reading in the Bible about the end times, you get to experience it. How exciting is that? That is so awesome. So you're part of an incredibly historical, biblical time. He's going to pour out his spirit on you. He's going to use your life for him, for the good of his kingdom, if you allow him today. Now, real quick, verse 30. Back there to verse 30, Joel, uh, verse 32, 30. Uh, he's talking about the great tribulation, which immediately follows the rapture. The rapture is when Jesus comes. He takes us all away. We meet him in the clouds, right? Okay, and we get to go be with him, and then the great tribulation happens, okay? And this is going to be an incredibly difficult time to live through. You do not want to live through this. You don't want your family, your friends, your neighbors, your coworkers. Nobody's going to want to live through this. This is, you think the behavior was bad on board the Titanic? It's going to be much, much worse in the Great Tribulation, okay? All right? So it's important that we all get our lives right with Jesus today, okay? All right? I'm going to have the uh, worship team come back. We're, we're, we're going to close the service. Um, if you need a, a healing, a fresh and filling of the Holy Spirit, whatever you need, you need prayer for whatever, comfort, whatever, you come, you get what you need from the Lord. But first things first, we have to make sure that everybody live streaming today, everybody who's in this sanctuary is right with Jesus got to have clean hearts before him, folks. We got to have clean hearts before him. This is serious business. Like Joel spoke to the church. He spoke serious business. Time to get right with Jesus. All right, stand with me, please, folks. Stand with me. We are going to, uh, we're going to just pray a prayer. We're going to ask God to come in, cleanse us. It, the prayer doesn't mean anything if you're not sincere, though. It doesn't mean anything. It's time to really get sincere before the Lord. Does everybody understand that? This is serious time. I'm going to ask you to bow your heads. Don't pay attention to the person next to you, the person behind you. We're just going to have a solemn time before the Lord. Amen. Uh, please just pray along with me. Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. I ask for your forgiveness. I believe you died for my sins and you rose from the dead and I turn away from my sins today and I invite you into my heart and life. Help me to trust and follow you and fill me with your precious Holy Spirit to do your work. In the name of Jesus, we're opening this altar. You come forward. You get what you need from the Lord. Come, 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 come. Now is the time to come. Come. We're, we're not playing games, folks. Come on. Come on. I'm going to ask the prayer team, come forward. Come on. Thank you, Pastor. I appreciate that. Now is the time. Now is the time, folks, to come. Get right with the Lord.